Next on BYUSN, what would success look like for BYU men's basketball the rest of this season? And two-time Super Bowl champion Andy Reid joins the program. How close was he, if at all, to coaching BYU after Lavelle? Welcome to BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Happy President's Day. It is Monday, February 20th. Wherever and however you're connected, great to have you with us. I'm Spencer Linton alongside 2036 presidential election hopeful Jerem Jordan. Uh, who's your favorite president? Grover Cleveland. <laughs> Why? <laughs> no, I, don't, I don't know. I can tell you my least favorite president, Martin Van Buren. <laughs> <laughs> Your cause is just, but I can do nothing for you. Okay. Thanks for nothing, dog. Hey, I, I, all of the presidents have uh, some great qualities. If, if I had to pick some one, have some bad ones. I'd probably say FDR, Franklin D. Roosevelt. Out of the Great Depression, through World War II, greatest generation, baby boomers, all of that stuff. My eighth cousin is my favorite, uh, Abe Lincoln. Your eighth cousin? Eighth, yeah. That's pretty close. Yeah, through his uh, mom's side <laughs> of the family. Yeah, we're, we're super tight that way. Follow in his footsteps, Jerem. 2036 and, is and your wear year. wear top hats. Uh, yeah, okay, on today's show, luckily not that talk. Uh, what does success look like for BYU men's hoops the rest of the season, as Spencer just said? Andy Reid will join the program to talk about his uh, second Super Bowl win. Can't wait for that combo. I'd vote for that guy for president. Yeah, participating in a baby blessing the day of the Super Bowl. We'll break that down. Some Cougars in the NFL make some new uh, moves in which BYU team won a conference title over the weekend. There were multiple. Mm -hmm. Here are today's headlines. BYU men's basketball did not win a conference title over the weekend. Another tough loss to an elite level team in West Coast Conference play. Losing at St. Mary's 71-65. BYU drops to 6-9 in WCC play. They will finish with a losing record in the conference for the first time ever. They're currently in seventh place. In the losing effort, Fusini Traore had 16 points and six rebounds. Spencer Johnson with 12 points and seven rebounds. Women's basketball loses to San Francisco 72-59. Lauren Gustin had 13 rebounds to break the West Coast Conference single season record. Zane Anderson is switching teams in the NFL, leaving Andy Reid and the Kansas City Chiefs for a two-year contract with the Buffalo Bills. Kairos Tonga also has re-signed with the Minnesota Vikings. Number eight men's volleyball lost twice to number two UCLA in three both nights. Eight and four on the season. UCLA hit over 430 both nights. Men's and women's track and field taking home team championships in their finale run, pun intended, through the MPSF championships. Individual titles on the men's side, Seven of them, or six rather, and seven individual championships on the women's side. Baseball won two of the first three games at Louisiana Tech to open the season. 10-1 Friday, then split Saturday. Game four tonight, 7 Eastern on the BYU Radio app. How about women's softball? Finishing 5-0 in the Littlewood Classic, including wins over nationally ranked Arizona State, Portland State, Oregon State, Illinois State, all the states, and DePaul. Alaska? Men's golf wins the John A. Burns Intercollegiate, breaking a 54-hole school record by an incredible 18 shots. Shot a 22-under led by Carson Lundell, Keanu Aquina, David Timmons, and Tyson Shelley, all finishing top 10. Beat three top 20 teams as well there. Gymnastics loses to Boise State with their second lowest score of the season. This is interesting in their push for regionals, a 194.925. The Cougars were led by Elise Rollins, who had the highest beam score on the night with a 9.925. She is an All-American in that event. Men's Swim and Dive wins the MPSF Championship. The women's uh, team took third. Congratulations to uh, both, especially the men. In the XFL, led by The Rock, <laughs> former BYU Cougar Tomasi Laulile had the first pick six in the XFL campaign this year. To help the Arlington Renegades win against the Vegas Vipers by a final of 22-20, T. John Caroma also in the XFL split time at center for the Seattle Sea Dragons. The Trogdors? Are you a Sea Dragon fan? No. They lost 22-18 against the DC Defenders. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trend. Now are you ready for war? You only got one shot. One shot. One shot. Are you sick of one more shot. 
technically for BYU men's basketball in the regular season to try and close out San Francisco. Then it's on to Vegas and the WCC tournament for who knows what. Will BYU be the five seed, the six seed, or the seven seed? Whatever the seed, they got to win some games, figure it out, because they need to rid the four-game losing streak. Jerem, what would success look like for BYU men's basketball the rest of the season if you could paint that picture? Um, winning two games in Vegas. Okay. Uh, I think one game in Vegas is uh, certainly fair to ask of BYU. Like, BYU's one and done in Vegas. That's, that's never that successful. Even if you get to the semis, you're one of the top two teams. You should, uh, you're the higher seed. Hopefully you win that game, you go to the championship game. So it's always at least one game. But I think for this team, especially because right now they're sitting in the, the seventh spot, which is crazy, that uh, you know, if, if they're in the seventh spot, you're going to play the worst team in the league, which is probably Pepperdine. And that's the team that's already beaten you. Yep. You should win one. And then you should, uh, you know, win another and get to the quarters, and then we'll see what happens. But yeah, I, I think it's, I think it's beat San Francisco at home Saturday. If you only beat San Francisco at home or it loses, they got they got bigger props, right? Which is a serious possibility. The BYU's on a slide right now, but uh, yeah, if they beat San Francisco Saturday, they win um, two in Vegas. I, again, we're talking success. We're not talking like ex minimal expectation. Success, right? Win two to me, and then if you bow out in the quarters, if you happen to be a uh, 17, I would love for BYU to somehow, it, it, let's say they're the six, or even the five, they climb up to five somehow, probably that would be like ideal. the six, that, that you, you, uh, you know, still win two games. If you're the six and you win a game and then you bow out, yeah, that's good. I wouldn't call it success, though. Um, certainly the expectations for this team continue to kind of uh, slide down a hill as they, they lose at the end of the season, but... Yeah, BYU played uh, St. Mary's uh, tough and unfortunately came up short. They were in it late again. I drew a comparison in our conversation this morning to how things felt for BYU football after week nine or game nine of the college football season. BYU's four and five, knowing that they have to go play at Boise State. And we're all sitting here wondering, oh, gosh, is BYU going to make a bowl game? Like, just salvage something, get to a bowl game. And then they proceeded to win four straight games, including a big win at Boise State, and then won a bowl game with their fourth-string quarterback and a bunch of dudes out, and finished eight and five. And we were all like, "Oh, okay, that was that was okay. It was as good as it could have been, with how bad it got nine games into the season." I feel like BYU basketball is in a similar situation. They've also lost four straight games, which the football team had done to get to four and five. But there is opportunity, perhaps, to salvage something. And so success is relative, and yeah, it's, a what liberal, can they, it's a liberal use of that, right? What can they save? What can you save? And if they can get to Monday at the West Coast Conference Tournament, to me that equals what BYU football did getting to 8-5. and five. Just get to Monday. I don't care if you're the 7th seed, the 6th seed, or the 5th seed. If you have a buy into Friday, great. Just get to Monday and have a shot at St. Mary's or Gonzaga on Monday. Probably not going to win that game. But to get to Monday, you've won maybe three games, at least two games to do so. And that means you probably got to beat San Francisco to be in a favorable seating to get to Monday. So that would be at least three straight wins. Win three straight games, get to Monday, and now you've salvaged something. That, that is my picture, my realistic picture of success for BYU the remainder of this season, which would put them at 19 and 16 on the season, three games over 500. Not great, but yeah. it's, it's something, right? It's something. It, it's something, but we're, we're scratching for whatever we can Trying gather. Trying to find something. I, I, I think, like, in football, losing four games in a row is like losing 10 in a row in basketball, like a third of the season. That would just be insane. That was quite the slide and was difficult given the expectation. Also, um, and I feel you in one sense, right, of the comparison, but, like, the football team has three NFL draft picks. Like, this, this team doesn't have... Um, that kind of talent on it, the men's basketball, as currently constituted, right? So what, what are they going to save? If they somehow made the NIT, that would save something. Sure, that's probably getting to a bowl game, right? Making the NIT comparable to just getting to a bowl game as a 7-5 and five team? I, yeah, I, I think like winning half your games um, in football is, is a little different to me. I, yeah, I, I don't know, because in co college basketball, there are like 363 teams or something, and BYU refuses to play in anything below the NIT. Um, 
CBI, I think, would be the one. I don't think that I think BYU is too big of a school for the CIT. Okay. If I understand it correctly. Um, yeah, BYU didn't make the NIT. That's that's just abject failure um, for the program standard. Yeah. And I do want to make this comment. I, I tweeted this after the St. Mary's game, but this team will have a losing record in league for the first time in uh, WCC history and the last time, right? Jeremy, they've lost seven of their last nine league games. It's bad. Seven of nine. BYU's been pretty bad in 2023. They aren't the typical BYU team. We all understand it. We don't want to believe it. We want to hold them to a higher standard. They, unfortunately, are not what we want. We did this with Jimmer Fredette. We're still doing it with Taysom Hill. We want them to be something they are not. Um, they are still what they are, and that is good at a certain level at times, right? But BYU, play the moral victory card however you want. They BYU rose up in a way that they sh shouldn't on paper against St. Mary's and Gonzaga, that they are at least in those games. They shouldn't be in those games. This is a team that has a losing record in the league, that it's lost to some of the worst teams in the league, like San Francisco and Pepperdine and so on, I was happy with at least BYU being competitive. On paper, they're not supposed to be competitive in those games. The fact that BYU is at least in it. Again, this is more of a victory territory, I know. But I am at least uh, happy with the effort and uh, that the guys are putting out in these. They should get blown out in these games. And I am hoping that somehow BYU can turn a corner when it matters most, which is Vegas, and somehow win one of these games against a good team. Maybe it's not St. Mary's or Gonzaga. Maybe it's Santa Clara on Saturday. Just, just, yeah, just to, just to advance in that tourney and show us, like, oh, yes, they turned a corner. We can quantify that. Otherwise, you just go, oh, BYU wasn't a very good team. They got up for St. Mary's and Gonzaga, and they lost. BYU shouldn't have been in those games. So to some degree, I'm like, hey, Losers talk about margin. I'm happy that BYU played those guys tough. Should they have won any of those games? Absolutely not. Because they are have a losing record in league. And they've lost to Pepperdine. Like, this team isn't, unfortunately, great this year. Um, they're probably not even that good. But they, but they have, at times, risen to a level over expectation to at least compete with some of the best teams in the league who are ranked. The hope is that they actually turn that into something. Now, if they can in Vegas, now it's like, okay, we ended on a high note, like, like you're saying with football. Um, but if they don't make the NIT, ultimately it's disappointing. They've got to prepare themselves in a better way for the Big 12. It starts with better players and developing those. BYU just doesn't have enough uh, quality guys to be kind of in the top four, unfortunately, in league. You can blame other things. I know on Twitter people are like, oh, I wish the coaching was better. I wish the... This player was better. I wish last uh, four minutes execution was better. Yes, all of those th things need to be better. And next year, you're not going to have a Pepperdine sitting there waiting for you. You're going to have uh, teams with that level of athleticism every night, but that actually win games. I'll finish with this. Then there's the metric that people were arguing over Twitter about in my timeline yesterday of the Ken Pomeroy luck factor, where BYU is 354th. <laughs> out of 363 teams. Funny to quantify luck. Like, <laughs> like how do you quantify It is luck? a formula, though. Um, right, but how? Do you I don't know how it? much credibility you offer to it, but it does feel that way. Emotionally, it just feels like, oh, gosh, if Julian Strother misses that three-pointer, BYU beats Gonzaga. If Aiden Mahaney misses that turnaround jumper against BYU, BYU has now beaten Gonzaga and St. Mary's. And we're talking... One shot yeah. in each game, and we're having a totally different conversation here, right? Pretty wild. So it's tough to put it on luck, um, but BYU can salvage something. I think just get to Monday in Las Vegas. Just get. To oh, Monday. that'd be incredible. Get to Monday. Honestly, getting to Saturday might be. Might you, be the. They might need two games. They might need to win twice to get to Saturday. They might. All right, our question of the day: In your opinion, what does success? look like for BYU men's basketball the rest of the season? Do you think there's a path to success for the team? Some of you are insinuating there's not. Rob Hayes on Facebook says winning the conference tournament. Last chance really? to do it. Really? The, the, That's the what? only way to get success? Excuse me? BYU hasn't done it since 01? He says would completely negate, this team? would completely negate all of the rough patches this season. Well, yes, of course it would. And they are absolutely capable of doing it. We've said it and joked. It would make perfect sense for this team to do it because it makes no sense. Yeah, it makes no sense based for this on what team, we've seen. This team to do it, but if they did it, we'd all take it.
<laughs> okay, uh, we only have two more BYU Basketball Smart Pope shows. So catch tomorrow's 8.30 Eastern time on the BYU TV app. The second to last one. Let's go. Up next, how was Super Bowl victory number two different from the first for the head coach, Andy Reid? He joins us live next. BYU guy back on a BYU show. Let's go. This is BYU Sports Nation. Quick crack. Wash all you want. Don't drive dirty. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork sells Ford vehicles, including the F-150, the pickup designed for work and play. Tim Daly Ford maintains a large inventory, providing more choices for selecting an F-150 with the power and engineering to carry and tow heavy loads. The F-150's design offers comfort, safety, and a range of options to choose from. Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. Four kids disappeared in these woods 23 years ago, never to be seen again. What is this thing? Whoa! <laughs> Has it made contact? It chose you for, for a reason. Your friends, they vanished. Men in suits showed up. Don't you want to know what it is? What's through the light? We are live in Studio B on President's Day with your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. -play. I am Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. It is our pleasure now to welcome into BYU Sports Nation for the first time ever in this live show format. We've done almost 2,500 episodes. It's about time. Andy Reid. We waited until he won a second Super Bowl, yeah. then we invited him on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Coach, all you had to do was win a second Super Bowl title to get the show invite, so welcome. Well, listen, I appreciate you guys having me on. It's, uh, it's an honor. Thank you. What is your life like right now, a couple of weeks removed from the Super Bowl? Yeah, so it, it moves quick. So I, I gave the coaches a few days off, and then we have a big awards banquet, the 101 Awards back in uh, Kansas City, and then <clears throat> we'll go back for that and then head to the Combine down in Indianapolis for a week. So time moves fast here, and I uh, love every minute of it, but it moves fast. That's quite the array, the spread you got behind you. This is the male charcuterie board, if you will, of, uh, of parties. Is all the footballs, all the helmets behind you. What, what's your favorite piece of uh, memorabilia in that room? Well, there, there's a, actually a little BYU statue up there somewhere of, uh, of uh, <laughs> when I had an opportunity to play at BYU, and I love that thing. I've, um, I've kept all my helmets. My wife gave them to me for one of, my, uh, one of our anniversary gifts and um and so i've got all those i've got all these balls and you you don't know what to do with all the balls when you get them so she she figured out how to put them on the wall here and uh so we did that and they accumulate fast and uh i've been lucky enough to do this a while so i've got a few of them there fantastic andy reed with us on byu sports nation coming off that second super bowl victory coach how was super bowl win number two different than the first yeah, I think you probably appreciate it just a little bit more. Um, everything slowed down, so you could appreciate it. Uh, you knew what was coming forward uh, once you got there, and then if you if you're lucky enough to win the son of a gun, then then you know uh, <laughs> th then you're able to enjoy it just a bit more. I mean, that first one was a whirlwind uh, after after the win. And then when you lose, you take them and throw them out of your mind, anyways. You don't you don't care about those, but. Uh, that, that second win, I, I just slowed down a bit. Is it a requirement for your team to trail by 10 points in the Super Bowls that you win? 
I'll tell you, it sure seems like it. We're, <laughs> we do good when we're behind, and uh, it, it makes you feel like the underdog. So you, you you fight a little harder, and our guys did a did a good job of that. You did something on Super Bowl Sunday that no coach in history has ever done, which is probably participate in a baby blessing. Uh, I believe it was Porter Ellitz. I played on an intramural team with Porter. We love Porter here. Yes. Um, yep. we, we saw some pictures. Matt Bushman was uh, on the program and talked about that sacrament meeting with some of the BYU guys. What was that like on one of the most important days of your life and certainly one of the most important days of Porter's life? Well, yeah, they're, they're both important things that, that took place. Uh, obviously, uh, Porter's baby, probably a little bit higher priority right there. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty important time and, uh, and Porter's life and his family's life and, and his baby's life. So uh, we were able to take care of that in the morning. Um, a lot of brother in there, which was, we had a lot of support for that baby. We were bouncing him almost to the ceiling. So <laughs> it, was, it was great. It, it was, it was great. Uh, it, it was a very spiritual moment and no better way to start Super Bowl Sunday than with that and then we were able to go out and play a good game one of the greatest coaches in pro football history Andy Reid is making his debut on BYU Sports Nation with the two Super Bowl victories now coach what's left on your goal progression chart at this point yeah so you know you get to this point you're you're glad you wake up the next day, right? I mean, that's uh, you put your Tommy Bahama on and you roll, man. So uh, I'm just I'm glad to be talking to you guys. So but that uh, every every day in the National Football League's a, a challenge, and you know the other guys are working their tails off to to do well, and so that that helps drive you. And and I still enjoy what I'm doing. I still enjoy the the guys. The, you know, they all stay kind of the same age. The Faces change, but they're the same age. I get, I get older. They get, they, they remain the same. So, uh, but they bring great energy and they they keep me young at heart. And uh, it's it's a great. It's just it's fun to, uh, uh, with the the strategy part of it. It's fun with the person, uh, the personality part of it, um, with the players. And uh, we just we we try to make it a good good working environment for the guys. And and then we roll from there. I'll tell you, it's uh uh, it's Fast and Furious. We, we enjoy it, though. Hey, Fast and the Furious uh, 10 coming out uh, in the next couple of months. Nice plug there, uh, Coach. Um, when Ty Detmer won the Heisman, he said, I've stood on the shoulders of some of the great BYU quarterbacks to get to this point. He was very appreciative of that. You've certainly talked a lot about Lavelle Edwards' influence and obviously Mike Holmgren as well with the BYU connection there. How did Lavelle in particular affect the way you have become uh, who you are as a coach and how you've been uh, in the NFL, kind of taking what he did in college and to some degree becoming the Lavelle from BYU fans in the NFL. Yeah, so Coach was uh, so, so uh, steady. I mean, he just kept, uh, and he was so honest with everybody. And you could be in the toughest of times, and he, he was going to, he was just going to be nice and calm and and be able to sort out things and give you a, uh, give you great information. When I left the building, he said, "Hey, when you come, this, this was a simple thing, but it's something I've carried throughout my life. You know, I mean, it was it was great, great advice." So he said, "Listen, when you you're you're going to become a, a full time coach now. So when you go to the head coach of the problem, I have a well thought out answer. So my wife is the head coach that I come. I, I do that with her. I, <laughs> she's the head coach, so I come to her if I, I've got a problem with a well thought out answer. But I, you can use that anywhere in life and." And he, he just had these little nuggets that he would throw at you and, um, as a player. And then I also served with him as a graduate assistant. So I was able to take that with me. And then, l listen, I mean, I, how many guys could sit here and say that uh, for, for the remaining part of Coach's life, he would call me once a week? Wow. I mean, we would talk once a week. I mean, that just doesn't, that doesn't happen. That just doesn't happen to everybody in, in my position. So I was grateful for that and all of his advice. We talked to our good friend Steve Young just a few days ago, and he shared some fantastic stories about you and potentially benching him as a JV quarterback so that a uh, father could watch his other son play at Air Force. <laughs> but that's a conversation for another day. Steve did say that you're changing the game and how coaches approach players now with this statement. He said, Andy has shown you that you can be excellent and you can be kind. 
How have you been able to establish that when it, it hasn't been the norm in football in such a tough game and a cutthroat world, but you, you've done this, so how have you done it? Yeah, well, I would tell you that's probably another thing I got from Coach uh, Edwards and, and Mike Holmgren likewise. I mean, I was lucky enough to work for both of them, and they uh, that's how they handled it. They were they were real with people. They were uh, if they weren't afraid to praise somebody if they did well. So a lot of times we get caught up in telling people how you know how bad they did, and uh, that's not uh, they know how bad they did. <laughs> so you, you don't really have to say that if you if you goof uh, everybody in the world knows it in the National Football League so uh, but to, to give them some positive reinforcement I think that that's important um, and I don't listen Steve had been around the National Football League uh, for for a long time and he he has an opportunity in his job to see the way a lot of people do it and um, and so I only know kind of how I was raised in it and and how we how we operate now with the, the chief. So, um, and we try to treat the guys like human beings and like you would want to be treated. All the little golden rules that we've been given in, in the church, I mean, you, you can use in, uh, in your jobs. And one of which is, you know, to be kind to others. So, and that's, uh, and to be teachers. And those are, those are things that we, you know, that we understand and we, we live by. So it's, uh, it's, I just transferred that into, into my job. Hey, Sermon on the Mount in NFL huddles. I love it. Um, you, you completed your second season with the Eagles in the year 2000. You go 11 and 5. At that point, Lavelle Edwards announces he's retiring. What kind of conversations happened with the possibility at BYU of taking over for Lavelle, given that you had just started to have your run of success with the Eagles? Um, oh, boy. I... You know that that would have been uh, a real honor to be able to do that. Um, I, I just had signed a new contract, and, mm. um, and and so I didn't have necessarily that flexibility. When you're a head coach, you're responsible uh, at this level for 20 different people. I mean, Kalani does a great job with that. I mean, it, you, it's not just one person you're dealing with, or just the organization that you're dealing with, but it's everybody that you're dealing with, and so. Um, it's not as easy uh, to just pick up and leave. You're, you're affecting all these different families. And so I, I wanted to make sure, you know, I, 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 obviously my, my energy was there. Um, I did have a chance to talk to some of the uh, people there, the, the athletic director and uh, vice president who's in charge of athletics. And, um, but I explained that to them that, listen, I, the responsibility I have not is not only to the the Eagles, but it's also to, um, you know, all these families. I think in the metaverse, at least the uh, fantasy metaverse for a lot of BYU fans, coach, they, they see you somehow <laughs> involved down the line. Uh, they, they take you until, the, I mean, the, the very end, if, if you were willing to do that. Um, have you ever entertained the idea that maybe when you're done coaching pro football, maybe there is something for you at BYU? Well, listen, I think BYU is in good hands, man. I, you know, I love Kalani and the job he does, and he brings a lot of what Coach Edwards brought uh, personality-wise. And, um, and and so, you know, not every year is going to be the best year. I mean, that's just not how, how it goes. But where, where BYU is at now with the leadership of Tom Homo and, and Chad and Lee and all the different people that are involved in the leadership groups on, on – uh, uh, they're they're heading in the right direction. And then all of a sudden, we get to be in one of these mega conferences, and mm. and uh, how great is that? I mean, that, that's a phenomenal thing. You don't get there by not having a great reputation um, as a football team. So uh, here we sit, and and now everybody gets to raise their game up just a tick to uh, to compete. It's the next challenge, and uh, we're all very excited about it. This fall, you came to a home game during a bye week, I believe, and uh, Chad Lewis told us you were offered a box, and you said, no, I want to I want to sit in the stands. They announced your name. I know Greg Rubel even said the section you were sitting in. Um, can you just casually go get a cougar tail at that point, or do you send a runner? How does that work? Well, they actually sent me a bunch of cougar tails. This would be really good. Um, so I, I, I enjoyed that. Um, but, uh, no, you want to be out 
out there and kind of get a feel for things. And I'm used to being on the sideline and, and heck, they had me a seat as close to the sideline as we could get. I, I was sitting right next to Davis, who I compete against with the against the Chargers, and I was giving him the business. He was giving me the business, but <laughs> we were pulling for BYU. So, you know, we were all pulling in the same direction, which is which is great. But I got a feel for it. That, that's what I, I enjoy that part of it. Coach, you bring up Michael Davis, and obviously Matt Bushman is a part of the Chiefs. Zane Anderson was on your practice squad this year. You've got ties with Chad Lewis and Daniel Sorensen. A lot of BYU ties in the NFL right now, and guys making an impact. How much do you feel the impact of BYU with former players doing their thing, especially this last season? Well, listen, I love having uh, BYU players on there. San Francisco's got a pretty good linebacker. <laughs> that they went to BYU, and then I had the Reynolds brothers, um, you know, so um, at one time in Philadelphia. Um, and so, I listen, I, um, you know, I've always had BYU guys uh, on the team, and they've always been so good. Dan Sorensen played for me for a number of years and was a hard-hitting safety for us, and he's playing for New Orleans now. But he, he did a great job for us, uh, actually led us to one of the Super Bowls. So... Um, I, I appreciated all of his, uh, you know, worth that he gave that, that football team. The, the thing that you get is you get great character. I, I joke about Chad Lewis. I mean, here he was. He was my favorite, and everybody knew he was my favorite, and we got away with it. Right? So he was a teacher's pet, and nobody ever, nobody ever said, hey, you really favor Chad Lewis. I said, no, I, <laughs> you know, you all know he's my favorite. But, you know, he could tell the guys what their tattoos meant, and, and he would do that. He would mess with them. And say, do you guys know what that means? I, you know, you might want to double check what that means on your arm there, and because he speaks Mandarin, and, and <laughs> the guys have the tattoos with, with the, so he he would mess with them. But what it would do is it opened doors for him, and and he would get to know everybody, and then he became the team's favorite. So um, it, it was unique, you, you know, unique uh, relationship that he had in that locker room. And uh, Reno Mahe is another one. I mean, Reno was in there, uh, and he had a special relationship with his personality. So. It's great to see the guys get in into that mix of people. Uh, we've got people from all over the place, um, from all different backgrounds, and and now from different countries. So um, it's it's great to see our BYU uh, student athletes uh, come in there and uh, as a professional and and be able to work in and and work their way in uh, to a special relationship with all those guys in the locker room. Uh, Spencer, your son, is my neighbor, uh, and uh, I sit next to him in Elder Scorum sometime as the interim strength and conditioning coach at BYU. How proud are you of what he's doing with the Cougars and uh, helping them get stronger here before spring ball? Yeah, no, I know, I, I know he enjoys it and works very hard at it. He, uh, um, you know, he's a, he's a good kid. Like me, he lost his hair, as you know. He, he's, <laughs> he's now uh, gone with the chrome top, so... Uh, but he is, you know, he interned for me. So I got a chance to see him when he was younger, uh, uh, working in, you know, working in our strength department. And, and so he's been able to transfer that to a couple different schools and, and now BYU. And so I, I know he feels, uh, you know, he, he loves BYU. He's loved it since he was a kid and, um, it's a dream job for him. Andy Reid with us on BYU Sports Nation. Coach, we'll wrap up with this. We have circled October 21st on BYU's football schedule this fall because Texas Tech is playing in Provo against BYU, and Matt Bushman told us he's already had a conversation with Pat Mahomes about trying to petition the NFL so that you can have a bye week so that they can come out and watch that game together. Uh, if that happens, would you be with them on that uh, jet over to Provo? Well, if it was a bye week, there's a good chance because Pat started talking about it right when the schedule came out, and then he and Bushman started getting into it, and <laughs> and uh, and so they obviously Pat brought me into the mix, and uh, I said, "You better strap it on when you come play the Cougs, man. <laughs> we, we don't mess around up there." <laughs> Great stuff. Uh, we appreciate the time, Coach. Uh, I know that you have some very valuable vacation time before you got to get back in the combine stuff and assessing personnel so thank you for your time and your kindness and congratulations once again from all of us at BYU Sports Nation and across Cougar Nation on your second Super Bowl victory guys I appreciate it man you do a good job right there I appreciate you thank you thank you so much Thanks, Andy, Andy Reid the head coach of the Kansas City Chiefs 
on BYU Sports Nation in his blue Tommy Bahama shirt. Completely on brand. Of course, one of the nicest guys uh, ever. He came a couple years ago for Media Day, which was fun. We, get, we got to visit a little bit. But, uh, yeah, what, what a cool experience. And I've said it before, Spence. Um, Andy Reid at some point became the Lavelle in the pros for BYU fans. I don't, I don't know if we've sort of crystallized it or said it out loud in that way, but it's pretty special to have a coach who's one of the all-time greats in uh, you know, college football history in Lavelle. And then Andy has become one of the all-time greatest NFL coaches as a BYU guy. And a complete BYU guy. We're talking cougar tails, baby blessings, elders quorum. Like, he is all in, right? Um, Chad Lewis is my favorite, and everybody knew it. And everybody <laughs> and he knew it. Yeah, just what one of the most likable guys in football in sports. Uh, so great to have Andy on the show. That was really fun. Yeah, you just saw firsthand what Steve Young's talking about. Like, yeah, completely down to earth. Just zero hubris, ultra humble, but wildly successful and just incredible, elite in his craft, but also kind. And one thing, yes, the kindest thing is cool, right? Um, you, you can be great and kind at the same time. Um, one thing that's great about him too is, as he gets up there in age, he is still crazy creative with his play calling and relatable to his players who stay about the same age, right? Sometimes there are coaches who get a little older, they don't relate to the players, and they kind of stick to the old school stuff. He is so creative and relatable. I, I appreciate that sort of adaptability that he has that's unique um, among the NFL coaches there. I just love that he stays true to who he is at mm -hmm. all times. Like, he is so consistent. In Does he world. have a Tommy Bahama deal? He has to. <laughs> I, would, I would think so, right? Why would Tommy Bahama not make him yeah. their poster child? Also, uh, Fast and the Furious. Not a, exactly a reference to the movies, but I love the movies. <laughs> and uh, Fast X is coming out. So well, we learned go. some things, too, uh, about the scenario in 2001 when Lavelle was done. And I've always wondered. Yeah, a lot of people have speculated. Ask. Yeah, so he's, he did have conversations, of course. But at that point, he had, he had gone 5-11 uh, and 11 in year one with the Eagles. Then he was 11-5. A head coach who isn't fired in the NFL doesn't leave an NFL job, especially one where you're about to kick this thing into gear and go to multiple yeah. conference championships. And, of course, they win in 04, uh, the NFC, and go to the Super Bowl there. Um, the first of four for him at this point. Yeah, BYU fans have fantasized for a long time about Andy Reid being involved in, in some capacity. capacity. When right. he retires with the Chiefs, I don't see like him doing anything with BYU. Like we're past that point. Yeah. He's too big of a deal. That's why we also. asked the question, so we can yes. probably just put that baby to bed. We can put it to we bed. Put it to bed. Yep, and it is staying uh, asleep. Not yeah. to say that we wouldn't love it, but let yeah. Oh, we'd love it for sure. Let, let the man rest. <laughs> <laughs> He's won two Super Bowls. He doesn't maybe, care about and maybe more. He doesn't care about going eight and five yeah. in the Big Twelve. He can be an analyst on our show, Jerome. Yes, he can. How about he'll and be involved he, in that capacity. He'd rather be on the beach. But or he yeah. can be an offensive analyst for Kalani and just you know offer advice over the phone from his vacation. From home. Zoom. Yeah. He's like run the ring around the rosy play. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Thursday, fourth place women's soups taking on second place Portland. Big game, nine Eastern on BYU TV. We got you. All right, we transition back to basketball after this. How can BYU fans count the Mac McClung dunk domination as a win for the Cougars? It's probably a stretch, but we're going to attempt. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life. When you live at Trio, less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TrioOrem.com. Whether you want to rock your retirement on the court, on the snow, on the waves, or in the gym, at Mountain America, we're here to help you get things rolling. Learn more at macu.com slash retirement. Mountain America, guiding you forward. Utah is a special place. Our communities, the people, 
the history. There is no place quite like Utah. At Siegfried and Jensen, we're honored to say that we are from Utah. We live here, work here, and when someone is injured, we're proud to say we've helped a neighbor when they've needed it most. We know Utah. At Siegfried and Jensen, we're here for you. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. Here's the thing about BYU Sports Nation. It's a banner that unites fans all over the world. BYU TV and BYU Radio are all about bringing your family events and games live. On air, online, and on the free apps. It's the next best thing to being there. Connecting your fandom with others across BYU Sports Nation. Download the apps and get exclusive access to analysis and interviews with players and coaches. BYU TV and BYU Radio, the place for all things Cougar sports. Tune in, join in. Hey, make sure you follow BYU Sports Nation for Andy Reid interviews, yeah. Steve Young interviews, Matt Bushman interviews. Okay? Chad uh, Lewis. Yeah, ever heard of them? We just uh, talked to you guys who played in the Super Bowl. Reno that's Bonhe. all we do. Dennis Pitta. Yeah. Forcibly Dennis Pitta. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. Check it out. He is Jerem. I am Spencer. We're headed to Tommy oh, Bahama after yeah. this. Yeah, we're getting, we're getting them shirts. Let's, Let's whip Andy it. Andy sent us. <laughs> Cougar Whip Around presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping like, partner. Andy how, who? Andy Reid. How is there not like a 25% off if you mention Andy Reid? Use the promo code almost Andy Reid. <laughs> <laughs> Men's hoops is better than its opponents in multiple stat categories this season. Two-point yeah. percentage, rebounding assist points. Greg brought a tweet that kind of put us onto this. Is this team better than its record? No. You are what you do. They are who we thought they were, and we let them off the hook? They are their record. They are their record. What's BYU's record again? I don't even know. Now, I, I, I know, and this plays into, like, all these positive stats. Like, how have they outplayed their opponents consistently in all these stats? And lost so many games. How do they not have a better record? Yep. And that's where maybe the, Unlucky. the luck metric comes into that's play a little a bit. That's such a cop out to me. Though. I know. I, I feel know. you, but I hate it. Like Roberto Clemente said, luck is when preparation meets opportunity. Is BYU not prepared enough or not opportune enough? Like I think BYU is given a great effort. Obviously, when you lose at home to Santa Clara uh, like that, you're down 20. You feel like, well, maybe you, you could do something different, right? You shouldn't lose at Pepperdine, but BYU's lost at Pepperdine six times in 12 years. Is like, there bad luck in the idea that Julian Strother makes a 26-foot three-pointer to beat BYU? I think it's not bad luck. I think he's a great player. Like, sometimes good players make good plays. Or an Aiden Mahaney, the same thing. Good player makes a good play. Like, he's, in, he's the next in line of the great St. Mary's point guard. And BYU like, just didn't make free throws, right? Make a free throw so that you tie. Yeah. That it's yeah. a tie, not a go-ahead bucket yeah. or whatever. Yeah. I'm with you. I don't put a lot of stock into the, the luck thing. Just, I never it, answered. I, I, I say no. I think BYU is what its record is. I think that's it, – in sports, it's great. Like, you are what your record is. BYU snuck away a couple of victories, too, from the jaws of defeat. Let's yeah. not forget, Creighton, especially early in Idaho State, same way. Idaho, Missouri State. State. Yeah. Right? Yeah. No, the, this team is their record. Yeah. And they have an opportunity to change it. And that's, that's why, why I love we'll sports. We'll all keep like, watching. We'll all keep watching. It's not what you think you are. It's what you do. Yeah. It's not what you say you are. It's what you do. College football is looking at four possible rule changes, Jerem. Number yeah. one, prohibiting consecutive timeouts. No more icing the kicker. Okay. Okay. Number two, no untimed down at the end of the first and third quarters. Mm -hmm. Three, the clock runs after first downs except inside of two minutes. Okay. And four, a clock runs on incompletions once the ball is spotted. Hmm. Which possible changes do you like or dislike? I dislike the incompletions one. Um, no, clock stops. Let's just keep it simple there. I, I don't. This isn't baseball where they're going to a pitch clock. Kind of, it, it, it's okay. If the game naturally stops, it's fine. Um, the no on time downs in the first quarter, thir third quarter, that's fine. I think people haven't noticed this, but like five years ago, they said, okay, if you run out of bounds or whatever, the clock keeps going once the ball is spotted. Like that exists. So the clock is running already. I think we're good. Football, we don't. We're not needing to speed up the game per se. We we're actually okay with the timing. It's the it's the once the ball is playing, how exciting is it? Football is great. It's baseball where they're making adjustments on this this year. Bigger bags, pitch clocks depending on if there's no one on base. Blah blah. I the no back to back timeouts, great. Whatever. If you have them, why can't you That's use them? That's the thing. Like I like, want those why to not? stay. If you have salvaged them for a scenario like that, then why you not? should be able to utilize them how you want to. In in college basketball, they have a use it or lose it situation. 
where if you haven't used one of the five by the uh, by the end of the first half, you just lose a timeout. Yep. And in the NBA, there's a use it or lose it situation as well going into, I believe, the last uh, two minutes or three yeah, minutes. Yeah, you can't carry over in football so, from first half to second either. Right, right. But in, but in basketball, they go, well, you, yeah, it's a little different. Football, I'd be fine if they kept it. There's up. only one rule change I want to, to apply here, and that is that the clock runs after first downs except inside of two minutes. I like that. I like that idea. Just spe- like, I would complain if football games ended 10 minutes earlier than they do. It's just like if you're down two scores and you've got the ball with 330, that affects that. You want more time to be able to come in. Change I think we like those coming. Okay. Yeah. Uh, men and women track and field both won MPSF indoor championships over the weekend. Most consistent sport on campus. Can we combine cross country with that? Yeah, that's what I was going to say too. To me, cross country is the most consistent. If we can combine track and field and cross country together as in like all one thing, then yes. The most consistently awesome are we, program. Are we combining men and women's volleyball in that kind of idea then? <laughs> you could, but, both it, but, good. but yeah. that, that wouldn't beat track and field and cross country and what yeah. they've accomplished over the and last And track years. is getting way better. Like track used to be good, but not great. Now they're pretty sinking good cross country is elite like constantly top five top ten. sure like women's soccer over the past few years has like has an argument yeah they've been consistently awesome men's volleyball is like oh you made one final four you know what i mean <laughs> granted different amount of teams competing but like yeah jerem the latest iteration of the xfl more pro football kicked off last weekend and featured former BYU defensive lineman tomasi laulile with a pick six for the Arlington Renegades and a win over the Vegas Vipers. Renegades of funk. That was fun to see that pop up on all the social media feeds. Like, oh, hey. Wait, you weren't Tom- watching Tomasi. Voraciously Live? You want to think, did you watch any of the XFL? No. I watched the highlights, though. Okay. Yeah. What was the best thing you saw? Tomasi. Other than Tomasi. The Rock speech? I don't know. <laughs> I, I was busy. I worked All-Star Weekend. I was Fair enough. Was busy. I'll yeah. tell you what I loved. The... Uh, transparency of the officials reviewing a call and making a call. Do you want that in the info? I would love it. Mm. It just is next hear what level. They're saying. Just hear what yep. they are discussing. I thought that was super unique. And also just more access to the players in game is always fun. Yeah. Like that is fun and I it's unique. I don't know that we could get to a point where we're like, we've had enough access. I think we could have, like you should be able to pay for a channel where you can hear it raw. There would be cursing. But like you pay for it and you just you just hey, hear what it is. Seven second delay. They used to front Travis Kelsey in the Super Bowl. But they don't want like strategy given out. The other teams seeing that. I, I like the officials especially. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Uh, dunk contest winner Mac McClung had BYU in his final schools before transferring from uh, after he was transferred from Georgetown to Texas Tech. In his uh, dunk, is his dunk contest victory a BYU win by association? No, it's <laughs> not. Not in any way, shape, no. or form. He didn't come to BYU. No. He BYU felt like they had a legit shot at him. By the way, this is during COVID. They're recruiting him super hard. This is when NIL was just starting to kind of like yeah. gain some steam. Yeah. What? Yeah. NIL above board for all the schools that yes. were paying under already. Yep. Mac McClung winning was very entertaining. It was very fun. Super fun. Great yeah. dunk competition. Unbelievable. Zero ties to BYU. So, no. no, this is not a BYU victory in any way, shape, or form. Um, we can't start counting 6-2 white guy championships as BYU wins. <laughs> okay? That's too far. The memes that, that came too out far. after he won the dunk contest were fantastic. So good. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah Mac's a baller, dude. Um, anyone under, like, 35 already knew who Mac was. I think the rest of the country's like, who is this guy? It's like, we've been seeing his highlights on TikTok for a long time. Mm. Listen to Cougar Baseball on the BYU Radio app tonight, 7 Eastern, as BYU finishes the season opening series at Louisiana Tech, 7 Eastern on BYU Radio. Shep on the call. Up next... Another win for Jerem in fantasy basketball. Spoiler alert. Shocker! Spoiler alert. Right? <laughs> this is hey, BYU Sports. There were three parts right there from Rudy. For yeah, it. yeah. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk, your e commerce logistics shipping partner.
If you're looking to build your brand awareness and increase market share as BYU moves into the Big 12, this is the place, BYU, BYU Athletics. Athletics. We can provide the tools you need to make sure your company is seen and heard. BYU Athletics is where you can align your products and services with loyal fans that cheer for our Cougars. And they can also help your business win. Learn more about what a partnership with BYU Athletics and your company will look like. After all, this is the place. Email sponsorship at byu.edu today. BYU men's hoops dreams are flying high. But before hitting the hardwoods of the Big 12, they're shooting to leave their royal blue imprint on the courts of the WCC. Join us for BYU Sports Nation game day as we chat it up with Coach Pope on the team's growth, dive deep into player profiles, and keep it real on the Cougs' big dance chances. It's time to raise the spirited Y banner on our final tour of the WCC. BYU Sports Nation game day. Tune in, join us. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation on President's Day. We are live in Studio B. Hope you're enjoying your holiday. Hope you enjoyed our interview with Andy Reid. If you missed it, you can find it in a variety of fashions. You need to listen to the two-time Super Bowl champion coach discuss why he makes Chad Lewis his favorite and why he doesn't deny it. How close was he to actually and, yes, coaching the BYU after Lavelle? How Lavelle's? close was he to actually taking yeah. the job in 2001? He wasn't. And how close uh, am I to it. actually winning at least one more head-to-head -head fantasy basketball matchup this week, uh, this uh, season? Um, Probably not very close. I won by 40. Yeah. So hey, I, won. I wanted you to win by 30, so victory for me. Are we going to start giving uh, a line on this? Yes, like, we should. Like, we now, should. Now I have to Over cover, like, 28. 12. <laughs> <laughs> and a half. <laughs> Over under 28 this week. Yeah. 231 points. Yeah, how do we how do we sort of uh, level this out here? Because be football the was line. obviously you Same went thing. We 12 and 0, and then I won the bowl game. A line. Once, once it's domination's established, just we yes. start setting lines. Yes. It makes everything interesting. We just need it more interesting. Because right now it's not. <laughs> it wasn't in football or basketball. Yeah. No. Lauren, Lauren Gustin only had 27 parbs. She's averaging like 36 Saturday. Still dominated. Yeah, she's incredible. G Gideon George uh, struggling a little bit right now. Good player. By the way, Gideon George and Atiki Ali Atiki were at the All-Star game yesterday. Okay. And the halftime was Burna Boy and other Nigerian artists. Okay. Which was super cool. So I'm DMing Gideon. I'm like, bro, you loving this? Halftime's awesome. He's like, yeah, it's so great. So it was cool to have uh, have him in the house. There. Cool cultural event all yeah. weekend, just to have the All Star competition back in you. More on that um, next segment. But For yeah. Sure. So I'm yeah I'm not yeah yeah one. All know, right. Great. Yeah. Uh, so we need to look at the average you won by over the past four weeks and then like determine a, a line. Like, if it's plus 25 or... Control. You, you, you guys figure it out. <laughs> okay, if you missed any of, any of my domination in uh, fantasy basketball, uh, or as mentioned, the, the Andy Reid uh, interview was spectacular. It was great. Fun. Um, shows, games, deep blues. You can all watch them again or for the first time. BYUSN.com or download the free BYU TV app to get all of this on demand. Up next, Jeremy's going to tell everybody how to make the All-Star game better in the NBA. I am. <laughs> <laughs> Give me courtside seats. Oh, but he will talk about the All-Star experience overall because yeah. he had a unique vantage. Yeah, that was great. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. the heat, getting set for success, demonstrating their drive. But 
when their blood and sweat turns to tears or anything else, we lay the groundwork for BYU's athletes to hit the ground running again. And you as well. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. Home is just about to get a whole lot happier. So you've been living with no furniture for about two months. Well, we're about to change that for you. Watch as helpful folks lend a hand to those in need. See them refurbish and replenish homes all over the world. Caitlin left her house when she was 13, and now she's finally home. With all kinds of shows to explore on the BYU TV app, you're sure to find loads your family can watch together. Stream them all for free. John, what can we do? Don't be afraid. Jairus! This prison is nothing now that he's here. Unclean! You are not to be in the street or among us. Andrew, listen to him. In all that he said to those thousands of people, there was something just for you. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation's on demand. Download the free BYU TV and BYU radio app. Subscribe, rate, and review the podcast as well. Our question of the day, dealing with basketball and the BYU men's side specifically, what does success look like for BYU basketball the remainder of the season? If you could draw that up, yeah. conjure it up. Yeah. Mike Dowling on Facebook says, why would there be any different answer to this than somehow miraculously winning the West Coast Conference Tournament to get an auto bid to the big dance? It's too high, too much. Yeah, we, we kind of went with a realistic approach, right? <laughs> yeah. Realistic remaining possible success. Realistic is uh, get through the quarters. Get to like, Monday. If you can get to Monday, that's very successful. Get to yeah. Monday would be success. For this group? After everything that this, this team, team has gone through. Yes. Yeah. That would require winning a couple of games you're probably not going to be favored in. It's at least two, if not three. We'll see what happens Saturday and how all the seating shakes out. Yeah. How, how crazy would that be? BYU beat San Francisco and then has to play Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and they win 20 games. And they get into the and NIT, the and we're like, we did it! That, yes, success. that would be awesome. Yes. That would be great. Reasonable success given the circumstances. It's still there for BYU. It's still there. All right, our Elite Voice of the Day presented by PAX Healthcare Elevated. Doesn't answer the question, but does offer us this from our good friend Mark Durant. Great show today, Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. Thanks. You guys are the Andy Reid and Lavelle Edwards of morning BYU sports broadcasting. <laughs> we wish. We love yeah, right. qualified Thank you. compliments. <laughs> yeah, a lot of competition. Up. Today's Rise and Shout Out presented by Mountain America, the official credit union, BYU Athletics. BYU alum Ryan Smith in Utah Jazz. Great event with All-Star Weekend. Fantastic. Great cultural event. Yeah, cool. You got to the whole thing, the all three days. Yep, it's awesome. Really cool. Awesome. Our thanks to today's guest, Andy Reid. Sorry, Dennis, no time. For Jeremy, I'm Spencer. Shout out to Spencer Reid, both of them. See you tomorrow on BYU Sports Nation. Go Cougs. Well done. BYU men's hoops dreams are flying high. But before hitting the hardwoods of the Big 12,